Hi, in this video we're going to be learning what git is and why you should use it uh, for all your projects and what are the commands that you need to run and use git properly. Uh, now I want to preface this by saying that this video by no means covers all of the git commands and functionalities. So this will be a beginner level tutorial so I will not cover be covering things like stashing and rebasing and a couple of other features that you wouldn't use uh, that often. Uh, so I'm going to I'm going to be covering uh, just the core functionality that you need uh, in your day-to-day -day, uh, Git usage. Now, uh, what is Git? So if we go to the uh, Git Wikipedia page, we find that Git is a distributed version control system for tracking changes in source code during software development. It is designed for coordinating work among, amongst programmers. Now, what does that mean in English? Basically, Git is a system that um, you initialize in your code base and then you add your files to it and then it tracks those files and each time you make changes and you commit them, it sets a certain uh, like commit which saves your progress in a way. Think video game checkpoints. Each commit is a checkpoint and then each time you make significant changes and you commit them, it saves them. And you can go back to any checkpoint uh, aka uh, commit and uh, check out where, what you've changed there what what is the difference from there to, to now and if you've like to me the most um, useful things about uh, about get is the ability to see what you've changed recently and sometimes if you had a problem you'll be like okay so I've changed these files so the problem must be coming from these files this is really useful and for beginners as well it can be if you break something you can just uh, reset to an earlier commit and start working again now, uh, the beauty of Git is that you can use it as well locally as well as remotely. So you can use it locally and have a local repository without any internet access and you can make all your commits and then later you can link it to a, a remote repository online on something like GitHub or Bitbucket or uh, GitLab and uh, you can do that for a couple of reasons. You can share it with uh, someone that collaborates with you or you can share it with the public or you can just put it on the cloud for you to access from different devices. So that becomes useful and it is well pushes your commits to the server. Um, now, this there's many reasons, of course, there's many more reasons why to use Git. You can, uh, you can research and you can find so many good reasons on why uh, every developer, in my opinion, should use Git for every project. Now, to use Git, you have to have it installed, of course, in your system. If you're using Windows, I uh, recommend gitforwindows.org. There's Git Bash tool, it's really cool. You get the Bash shell tool for Unix commands and you get Git as well. If you're using Mac, you can go to git-scm.com and you have both uh, links for Windows and Mac here. And if you're using um, Linux, you can run apt git install git and you will install it. Um, okay, so let's, let's get into it. <laughs> okay, now that you've installed git or git bash, you can go on the desktop or anywhere and run git bash here or just open a normal command line um, uh, window and to check that we have git we will run git dash oops actually not like that git dash dash version and it says that we have version uh, 218 so we do have git installed so let's actually make a project so let's make a directory called website and um, let's actually open this in vs code or any editor that you're using. Uh, from now on, I'm gonna be using the integrated terminal. <coughs> oh, what is all of this? Okay, so um, here, uh, let's create a couple of files. So, touch index.html script. I'm gonna create two scripts. So, script.js and um, let's say index.js. I'm gonna explain why in a second. Okay, so now we have our files. Let's initialize our git repository. So we do that by doing simply git init. Now we have a git repository. And if you go to the folder, you'll see that we have a, um, a hidden .git folder which has a lot of like stuff that, um, that watches and uh, has information about our repository. So now uh, let's add, let's say let's add the index to the git repository. You can do that by doing git index, git add index.html. So now this is added to our uh, Git repository. I mean to our, it's staged as a change because if we do get status now, 
which is a command that so shows you the current status of your Git repository. It says that we have this stage changed that we haven't committed because we've added this file. And we have two new files that are untracked because we haven't added them. Um, we can add all files. You don't have to add them one by one. We can add all files by doing git add dot, which adds all the files in this directory. And now if we do git status again, we see that all the uh, files are added, but we haven't committed. Let's clear the console and let's actually commit. Now that we've added the files, we can do git commit dash m for message and let's give it a message and best, best practice for this is that each time you uh, write a uh, commit message you need to describe at least a little bit about what what's changed since last commit what you've been working on so here i'm going to say uh, created uh, files nothing fancy so now that we've committed if we do get status it says on on branch master because that's the default branch and nothing to commit we're good Cool. So now let's let's change. Let's say you wanted to populate your index.html. Let's do doc tab and do like this is called website and uh, a heading one called website. What's cool is that now um, code, ed code editors have uh, default get support. So you get this color coding of what's changed. So this M means modified. And if we do get status now, it says that this file it's now modified because it's been added. So it doesn't say that it's unstaged. Well, the change is unstaged, but the file is modified. Again, so these are the commands you're gonna use most, like git init, uh, git add, git commit. So let's do git add all. And uh, actually we didn't need to do git add here. I always do this because sometimes you create new files, so I just do git add anyway. But in this case, we didn't need to. Um, so let's do git commit. Or actually we did, it, 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 staged, it stages the changes. So git commit, and let's say populated index.html. And now we've committed, and now that's gone. So our working tree is clean. Get, oops, um, get status. Why am I typing that? Status, okay, so nothing to commit. Okay, let's say um, we want to check what, what's been going on. Um, what's been going on in our Git repository? We can run Git log, which gives us information about our um, informations about our commits. So we get our commits and a bunch of information, who did them and when, and their ID. And we can even go back in time, which is cool. So Git checkout lets us go to a certain commit or a certain. Uh, uh, branch so by uh, we can give these first couple of uh, digits I used to I think it's seven once you have non unique digits if they repeat somehow but now we can even do like five or four and it will go that there so now we are at the first commit if you remember at the first commit we only had the files and we didn't have anything in them and now it's that's the case and now if we do get status it will say head detached at the ID of that commit. So we are at that commit. We're not at the branch master. We're not at the edge of our uh, of our uh, get repository. And if we do get log, we'll have only this one commit. So if we do get branch, which gives us information on which branch we have, but we only have one branch right now, which is master, but it does say that the head is detached at that commit. So we're not at master. And we can go back by simply doing get checkout master which goes to the branch master. So now we're back uh, at the present time, if you will. Now, one thing that you can do, let's say you wanna can cancel uh, a commit. Um, don't pay too much attention to this cancel thing because it rarely happens, but, but let's say you wanted to do it anyway. So let's do, by uh, don't pay too much attention, I mean, don't focus on this. The main thing is adding, and uh, later on I'll show you like how to add a remote repository and pushing. This is just something in case you needed it. So what we can do, if we wanna go back to a certain commit and we wanna cancel this, we can do get reset. And let's say we wanted to add this, uh, we wanna go ba back to this. So get reset and we give it the ID, uh, 3ACF9. And now we have gone back to this commit and the changes from there are, are still there. So now we can change what we've changed there and then commit again. Uh, so we've removed that uh, one commit. 
and now we can actually just commit it again the same one get commit um get commit yeah and uh, let's say um but again populated uh, index html actually we didn't stage the change it says to get add all and then get commit populated index html and there we go and if we do get log we will see that commit is back again um one other way of doing it is that we can do get reset dash dash hard and we give it the that commit so nine nine f three zero and now we are um at that commit actually i gave the wrong id sorry about that i want to go back to this one so three a c f nine and now we are at that commit, but this is a hard reset. So all those changes are removed. You see, we are at that commit and even what we've changed in the index HTML is gone. Let's bring back again that and the website here, and the heading website. And we can even use a um, thing, uh, what we call a VS code, get repository management. And we can just go here and do commit and it asks us for a message. Let's just say index HTML quickly. And it commits actually for us. We can use VS Code for that. Okay, so let's say we have these two scripts, right? And we have two developers. This is an example I'm going to use to show you why branches are useful. And let's say, obviously in this case it doesn't apply, but let's say, let's assume that this is a big application and working partially on index.js and script.js, they interfere with each other and they might break the code. So we have two separate developers and they want to work separately on these files. So we can create branches for them. So let's do, to create a branch, we can do um, get branch, uh, no, sorry, get, yeah, get branch. Get branch and we give it a name. And let's say this is the index branch. This is the guy that's working on the index. Or let's say the guy that's working on the index is working on the master branch and the other guy has his, his own index called in his own branch called script. So let's create this branch, get branch script. It doesn't say anything, but it's created a branch. If we do get, um, get branch, it says that we have this branch script and we can go to it by doing get checkout script. And now if we run get branch again, we see that we're on script. So let's do something in script. Let's, um, let's console log hello world. And let's save. And now let's do get add. And by the way, you can do them in the same line by doing uh, and 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 uh, excuse me, get commit. And let's do um, hello world. And now we've committed uh, a new commit, but to this branch only. So if we go back, if we do get checkout master, now that change is gone. And if we do get log here. We don't get that third hello world because this that was a different branch. Now let's say this guy is working on index and here he wants to console log something as well saying that this is the index file. And he saves the saves it and does get add and get commit. And let's say index.js. Of course, your uh, commit messages should be more descriptive, but I'm just using them as an example. And if we do get log, we get that change here. Okay, if you go back to, to the other branch um, script, you will see this change goes away. Oops, did I misspell something? Oh, we actually get checkout, not, not branch, because that creates a new branch. Get checkout script. And now we're at script, that change is gone, and this change is back. Now let's say, let, let me go back to master. And let's say they've done working, right? And they want to combine their work together. And this is called uh, merging. So what we can do is we want to merge script back into master. So we want to integrate those changes from script. So what we can do is that we can do get merge and we give the name of the 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 um, branch that we want to merge into this one, which is script. So we hit enter, and now we have merged script into this. And now if we see, we are on master, but we have both the changes. 
and if we do get log and we see that we've merged and we see the uh, changes from both of them. So the commit from that and the commit from this. Now you see how if you have a lot of commits, this get log can get a bit uh, like um, kind of it overpopulates it with too much information that we don't need. Uh, one flag that I like to use on get log is get log dash dash one line, which is this really cool uh, way. It shows you the branch here and it shows you the, the, the other branch that's here. And it shows you all the, the commits in a, in a cool compacted way. Now let's say, because this is now, um, this is now done, the script branch, we don't need it anymore because we still uh, have it. And let's say we want to de delete it. Easy. We can do that by, um, running, um, get branch and we give the name of the branch, which is script and we do dash dash delete. And now if we do get branch, we see that script is gone. So cool, we've merged it and deleted it. We don't need it anymore. Okay, so one actually um, one thing that developers need to do sometimes is that they need to share their code online. So they need to create get repositories and uh, share their code. So let's let's do that. So let me go here. Oops, and uh, in here, this is one actually one tool that I wanted to show you, but I'll show you in a second. Let's go to my GitHub. And let's create a new repository and let's call this git dash test and create it. And let's get this link, ignore this stuff because we've already done in it and on our first commit. Let's just take this SSH link. And by the way, if you haven't linked your GitHub to your uh, machine using uh, SSH keys, you can just take the HTTPS link and it will ask you to log in once you, once you start, you try to push. But I've already linked them. You can uh, Google how to link your um, GitHub to your to your machine. It's not um, it's outside the scope of this video. So now that we've got that link copied, we can do git remote add origin, and we paste that link and we hit enter. It doesn't say anything, but it's added it because if we do git remote, we see that we have an origin. And actually, I prefer to do git remote with dash v, which gives us more information about the, uh, the the remote repository. And now we can do get push. And on our first push, we need to set upstream, which is like dash dash set upstream to tell it which, um, which uh, repository by default to push to. And we can shorthand for that is dash u. And let's give it the origin, the repository and the branch, which is origin and master is the branch. So it's going to push the code. And now if we go to our repository here and we refresh and there we go, there's, this is our code. We can go here. Uh, we can click on commits. We can see all the commits. And uh, if we were to still have that branch, we will see the branch here. Everything is shown here. Uh, it says that you need to create a readme file. It's better. So let's actually create a readme file, readme.md for markdown. And let's say this is um, say this is a title and, um, what's a title actually is, is this, I think, no. Okay. So get test repo, um, repo and let's save and let's get add. And on the same line, let's get commit and let's say created a readme file. And uh, let's do get push. And now that it's pushed it, if we refresh, we will get a readme that says get a test repo and uh, as well that commit is, is here as well, which is super cool. So now that we have our remote, um, we can, we can even go and delete our stuff here. We can delete our files. Like, let's say you don't have access to them anymore, or you're on a different machine. You can simply just go here, copy this link and go uh, open a command line and do get clone and paste that. And you will have access to your code. Now, of course, if you have, um, see that our code is back. So of course, if you have, uh, uh, if, uh, a SSH key pair, 
that says to GitHub that this machine is the owner of the account or has access to this Git repository. Even with cloning, I can now make changes and push them. But if it's, if it's a public repository, anyone can clone it. So uh, be careful with what you put as public and private. And as well, be careful of the file that you have on there. You can have like some database information and stuff like that, stuff like that you don't want to push. So doing that, for example, let's install, let me put this on the left, uh, on the right rather. Let's initialize an NPM uh, project. And uh, actually I'm just gonna hit enter on everything. And let's, um, Let's install, let's say I wanna install bootstrap, npm install um, bootstrap. Um, yeah, so that installs bootstrap and see this is a new file. And okay, so now we have node modules and of course this is a big problem. Look at all these files. We don't wanna add all these files to our repository because we can always run npm install and this is, will be created. So what we can do is we can create a file, a dot get ignore file and here we can specify files that we don't want to add to our repository so if we add files here even when we do get add uh, dot which adds all file it will still ignore those files so here we want to add the directory of node modules so we do slash node underscore modules and if we save this will be grayed out so this will not be added now so only these three files the package json package log json and the git ignore will be added so now let's add all files and let's do git commit and uh, let's say installed bootstrap and now we have committed see if we do now get status it will give us information as well it will say working tree clean and we are ahead of our remote by one commit so we need to push uh, for our uh, remote to get updated to our current repos um, to our current progress so this is all the, this is like more than enough uh, commands. There's a lot of other commands that you might need situationally, but I'll leave them to you to learn. And there's this uh, cool resource. Where is it? Uh, is it get cheats? Yes, getcheats.com. And you can type any command. Let's say you're confused with the merge command. You type commerge and it gives you information about it. And if, wanna, if you want to know more, you click read more and it takes you to the actual get source control uh original website and there's way more information about all the flags you can use and all that stuff. Uh, you can also use a tool like uh, source tree, which is a, a get GUI, which, is, which stands for a graphical user interface, which shows you information about your repository. Sometimes actually, even I use this, it's a bit useful. Like um, if you have, for example, look at this project, look at this amount of commits. Uh, you can't look at this in the uh, command line and you can click and it visualizes the change. Look, you see all the files and what's changed in them, which is pretty cool. And um, for example, if we look at the, the one we just created, we just go here, add and we go to the desktop and we find, where is it? Is it? Yeah, we cloned it. So it's git test. Yeah. So if we add it and we click add here and we we will get information about, see, this is what we just created, created files. And even we get a branch here and then we merged the branch. So it's gone, which is, is pretty cool. And it shows that our repo main, um, our repo is still here, our remote and our current one is actually ahead by one commit. So yeah, uh, this is, uh, everything like not everything, like almost everything about Git repository more than when you, what you need dated on day to day basis. Um, I hope you've learned a lot from this. Um, Git is really useful. I recommend that you use it on every single project that you use. It's, it's good practice and uh, it helps a lot, increases your productivity. Um, again, if you like this video, like, subscribe, share, comment, anything you want. Uh, it means a lot to me. And uh, thank you for watching and I hope to see you soon. Bye.